inspired I'm sure they've been people. in pubs. I yeah. bet they have. I bet they've been in some games. I bet they played, you know, some uh, some mid matchups against each other in some of the pubs when when Thompson was in SEA. So, so let's see. Let's see what he's learned. See what he's able to bring out with the the vengeful mid. Uh, and then execrations like it's a lot of battling, a lot of brawling again. Right, this Mars, this yes. Ursa. They're ready to run at heroes. One. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think like, he could. I think he still could go for like zero two two and then have a stun at five. But I do want to see him have a stun to be able to try to so they can actually do stuff. Otherwise, I feel, I feel like they have no playmaking. Yeah. Uh, and you like this from uh, from Polison uh, on the four Enigma? Just two Sage Masks, just going straight up naked Necro, but nothing else in his inventory. Yep, fantastic way to do use your manner, your gold the most effectively, where it doesn't just yeah. go to waste spam and clarities. Now it actually builds into something, and you see that you know two point nine mana regen without a clarity popped up to eight point nine with it. Definitely yeah, really like pretty that. good. Yeah. yeah, there's a ward though, so they are going to be watching him the whole time. So we're going to see RR. He's going to mess with him quite a bit, break the clarity in particular. Throw that, yeah, throw the grass, break the clarity, and try to take those last hits. Very nicely done. Oh, yeah, this is, yeah, this is quite annoying for Paulison. Now, yeah, RR is going to greatly slow down the, the sort of free opening Paulison would want to have in that area of the map. And look at the place at the top. I mean, we have you know, pa Palos is there, so he, he's going to get to Kunkka. Oh, yeah, RR getting out as well from Paulison. I mean, that's, that's on Paulison there. He knew that this tree was around. Letting that curry get anywhere close to RR, oh, oh, that's a bit of a blunder from Polison. Yeah, now it's going to be the fight over the Hellbear Smasher, who's able to successfully get the last hit on this one. Well, he's pulling it away. This is more exciting than the late. I mean, he's going to go in for it, isn't he? He's, he's giving what? He's going to time it. The speed drops. Ooh! Ooh. Oh, I, sort of, I don't know if it actually did that here. I thought that down quickly. Now oh, is actually just going to get punched out of the jungle there. Polison is able to push him away. So Polison got the creep. He got what he came for. Look at the last, it's on mid, what we've had, oh, it's pretty even. In your dream of Ben Hur, 11 for 2, 11 for 5. In the down by Miracle. I mean, it, in all those things, you think he should be fine farming down here? I mean, how much of a, of a threat do these two heroes pose? Do you see them getting kills here? Depends on how low they they put themselves. I think the most important thing for tier one to do is just don't put yourself below like that three quarter HP threshold. I think if you're above that, you're pretty okay for the most part because they're not gonna you know they're not gonna catch you off guard. You're gonna get like speared into an arrow. Yeah. So if you have a decent amount of HP, you should be able to survive it. As now, aggression turns. BHM. Put the stun onto BHM and they'll get him. First, first blood. They can turn over towards your heart. Look at the two of them. Oh no. This combo to, to pull off the combos, but they end up getting comboed themselves. And that's when that's you ult that for it. Just say, guys, I lagged. That's why yeah. we died, you know? Uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could, it was smart for T1 there. Yeah, Jokum getting speared to a tree. Miracle just steps in between the two of them. He says, yep. what are you going to do now? You, you can't, you, the, the arrow can't be there to connect off the ground. Miracle I think it's positioning too, himself as it was. Th this combo is not deadly, really, because... The spear yeah. only lasts 1.6, right? But the distance that you're going to get with your arrow with these two, it's not going to be a good distance. It's going to be a really short distance, and that we know how bad it really is at low levels. It's, you know, 60 damage, max stun 3.5 if you get a max range. And it is so. scary, especially when you're trying to do it against these heroes that can turn so well. You know, Luna, yeah. insane hero right now, strong at pretty much all elements of the game. Farming, damage output in the early game with this Lucent Beam is insane. And then obviously Yokam, you know, Grimstroke, one of the best supports to, to play a lane that, that wants to fight in a two versus two. Just turns it around with these these huge nukes and stuns. And it's, it's a dangerous lane to play in. I mean, they're obviously going to respawn. And I, I imagine the two of them will come back down here, but I don't know what they can get done. It, it might already be a point where you sort of say goodbye Mirana and just let the Mars soak up the solo XP, right? I mean, do you really still want to be playing this lane as two of them? But with the positioning of the lane, it looks like it'll push. It's gonna push forward. So yeah, I think you maybe just have the Mirana move around and just secure elsewhere. Maybe you can set up on something on mid or just float around bottom. But yeah, Mars just gonna need levels because now that lane is lost. Yeah. You're gonna get no last hits yeah, anymore yeah. down there as this Mars. You have two armor. You walk up. You're just gonna get. You're gonna get killed immediately when you go back to that lane. So he has to just play back and defensive on that Mars and maybe just open up the game for the Mirana. And they, you know, they can set up arrows on the other lanes, right? You know, RR, if he's able to just slow down for with a brass, yep. that gives a good opportunity in mid if Ben Hur can find the connection with the remnant. A little tricky, you know, not necessarily guaranteed setups, but definitely things that, that they can make plays with once the rotations start coming in. Yep, he's got the two points in the eighth remnant, so yeah. 1.4 a second, you can at least get a little bit of enough. If Venge is too far up, you might be able to get an opportunity for sure. 
Mm. And oh, you know, Polison playing this Enigma this game. Um, you know, not missing the stun when a team feels that they can get away with a bit of extra greed. I mean, but when you do see these lineups, do you, do you think T1 have quite, kind of got a, gone away with drafting this Enigma here in this sort of situation? Like, does it feel greedy, or do you think that that they're going to be fine with this? I think it feels fine. There's no objective taken yeah. on the side of uh, Excursion. They don't have tower hitters again, which was the thing I talked about last game, where I felt like them not having that prevented them from make, being more a bit more aggressive than they are, prevented them from being as aggressive as they wanted to be in the game. So I'm fine with this Enigma. It's a fantastic game for it. There's no way to cancel. No way to cancel the Black Hole once he gets BKB. The Root, of course, does not cancel channeling. I don't believe for that one, right? Correct. So it's only TPs, right? Yeah. No, there's so. Root. Okay, yep, and we see Yaha, he did TP mid, did he fill, I guess he maybe filled up the bottle, I didn't actually see, but he, he, he took the advice that we were kind of saying, there's nothing he can really do to help out BHM, except playing from like the side, if he's playing directly from the lane, it's just a little bit too scary, so now he's putting up the map, maybe they can make some stuff happen. Radiant structures are fortified. Radiant structures are fortified. Oh, I think I'm, you know, just looking at the fact that Miracle's having a good lane, that's when you, you gotta start to... To be a little worried, to be honest, it's early, but you know, th this man is, is sort of king of farming in uh, in SEA. We saw he did on the Terra Blade. I can only imagine what he's going to be able to accomplish on a Lunar if he gets a free start. I'm surprised that he actually took the second point in a Lunar Blessing or a Beam. I've seen a lot of players, especially if you're getting like a kill advantage like that, you hold the points and then you just get the glaives and you, once you get to the jungle, you just have max glaives at level 7, which is nuts. I think Especially he did like have it. I think he did have it when they got the kills. I think he had it. Okay. No, that seems early. But I remember when it was paused. I was looking at it. I'm pretty sure he already three. had two points. Unless okay. you no, know, wait, you're right. You know, maybe you know, they paused after they died. So you're right. Yeah. He probably hit three from the kills. So yeah, no, you're, you're all right. He, did, he, he took it after. Just surprised to see not like save like yeah. one point. Not, not not two points for the blessing. You know, like the two points in beam, fine with because they have so much aggression in the lane, but. Cause I'm trying, you know we've seen um, obviously all the top teams what are playing Luna. I mean, what what, what is sort of the go-to like? How does it work with balancing putting points into the blessing and putting points into the glaive when it comes for for efficiency in farming? Is it is it always is it better to, to keep the Luna blessing at a certain level then max the glaives or is it is it better for the damage output to keep putting points in glaives first? Uh, it's just about getting. Blessing. It's just about getting level four glaives uh, as early as possible because it jumps from yeah, three to six bounces, so increase. you jungle just yeah. so much faster. So you want to have that one ideally at 7, which now he can't. Yeah. And we see 4 We didn't actually make a, make a mention of this one, but he was... He's doing really well up top versus that Ursa. Uh, he's level 5, and he went and caught the double creep wave and pulled it all the way behind the towers and then TP'd and got out. So there's no stun up there. He knows he can play really freely. TP, cool. Yeah, I know. I saw once uh, uh, about a few minutes in on that lane. Um, one hit away, he was playing it very, very risky. But he was getting away with it, you know, has, a, has not fared at all up here on the top lane. So you're right, we'll yeah, see what to... yeah. Be careful, he can get pretty low. Like, four of he's level five versus a level two tree, and so those cleaves, if he gets hit by like two or three of them, he's gonna be at a very low HP. Oh, four of thanks, thanks two to two hits, okay. Oh, he's got a salve. He's just getting efficiency out of it, but Ben Hur is gonna come in. Instantly reacts that. No hesitation there for Ben Hur. I mean, he saw it as quick as he Good attempt, but Yaha was able to find that arrow just in time. It's a good job he was there, otherwise, Forever would have styled his way straight back to the base. Under attack. Smart plays from both. Did end up with a, a bit of an interest. Well, but hey, maybe that was the intention from uh, from Forever. He's like, I'm gonna tank some tower hits, so I forced TP rotation from mid. You know, next level plays. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Ben Hur is off to a super good start though now. He has, he has an earn. So now he wants to play super active and with this skill build, he can. So looking to punish right away. And this is the pace that we wanted them to set last game, where they wanted them to play super fast, hyper fast with Ben Hur on the co-op. He's doing this a bit better here on the voice spirit this time around. Dyer's middle tower. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Now we can see builds. No surprise in your dreams going to be the one rushing the helm for the team. Radiance yep. top tower and, is under uh, tower. Is yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, okay, it's still going to be Battle Fury. I guess everyone in the world just goes Battle Fury Ursa nowadays. Yep. That is the way to play right now. Just the farm. And we did see it in your dream, and I was talking about how like if he doesn't get a point in stun early on, their playmaking is extremely limited. You know, right now it's 7 minutes, only 2-2. Two, two. He's got the 0-4-3 build. Ganking his lane, like how do you gank a lane for Avenger if he's got this? Like you have to just auto-attack him. 
back up. Yeah, so they so get the one of them. They do get the boat come crashing down. Yo camps there as well with the X-Y in range of Palace, but no Palace is able to jump to the side of the earth shot. They just need to do one more hit from Elusive Beam. And he'll be held in place long enough to get the kill. So they're happy with Enigma going down there. They'll take that trade any day of the week as now with Miracle in position. They can also look to start punching into this tier one tower. TPs will come in. They've got to be careful. But Miracle is six and of course has the Eclipse ready to go. Ben is going to try to make the jump in on him. Torrent out from Fred won't catch them. They'll turn attention over towards the Kunkun between the two of them. They should get him. Can they get that final touch? RR coming through the trees. Arrows out. Oh, for him, though. But the vision's there for the urn as Ferev will slowly die. Ben Hur is making these moves. 1 0 2. Getting aggressive and, and rotating and, and forcing these cores out of lanes. And that was Miracle making his move top to set up for all this. Well, look at bottom. BHM gets a full tower out of this exchange. And well, that's not I mean, like two full creep waves so far. Almost level Just 7 pretty, now. That's yeah, huge for him. Pretty nine minute. That is very fast. Now we have a stun point on in your dream, so now he can actually look to join. I feel like in the last one, if he had maybe a point of stun, he could have gone up top to maybe help and turn something around there, but having this, he was, you know, he's more of the farm style, so he was just sitting in the jungle. Yeah, big, uh, big opening for BHM as that Mars, because I felt, I felt like his game was really sabotaged after what happened down there. Um, that's a very good recovery. Some decent alarms here. Paulson's going to be happy with his arcane ring. 3k gold lead already. I so mean, they're taking advantage it. of the Enigma like The pick. kills that they're getting, yeah, for sure, are, they're adding up. You can see there on the net worth, Ben Hur leading the charge. Earn's done, level 8. It's a solid game from him so far. Arrow's going to come down. No follow up though. If anything shows that they know that they're coming, T1 are still going to try and move into into this half of the map of execration. See if they can get a catch on to Ben Hur. They're going to go and try and take the outpost back. The fight's going to kick off magic to out to Ben Hur, but Ben Hur jumps across for the Astro instead of the kill off the Grim. As they'll push them all the way back there. And they captured they did, it late. They did not they get, get the it in outpost time. in time. The XP goes to the Dire. On top. Oh, Hope's coming down, Torrent on Go. there, here's the connection on two of them, but the arena's out, in your dream, he's trapped, they'll jump over towards Paul, and Execration, they're going to be able to get the second one, they can even try and chase down for F2, as Earthshock back up, there's the slow, once more, staying on top of the Kunkka, Execration take all three, double kill for Ben Hur, he will fall oh, the illusion. to the army, the illusion and the necro books left behind by the rest of the team. But execration there, they're continuing to, to smash this early game. 10 minutes in, 4k lead. Did you see what happened to Polis in there? What did he do? That's when you, you know, that's when you play a teammate a little bit there. Polson was TPing out. I mean, maybe he made the call too. He's TPing out. Four of X. Oh, he got X. I did. I was. I said how back. I was like, well, maybe it will work out. But the back of my head, I was like, this ain't gonna work out. This was not gonna be happy. So a little funny. Maybe just some miscommunication because who knows who called that one. But yeah, a little bit of a slight miss up. But yeah, execution this time around. They're doing exactly what I wanted them to do in the first game of just playing. Super aggressive, matching all of the moves of T1. Now top, though, Ben Hur. Look about this. Soulbind on the two of them. It's locked them down nicely. Grabs in with the tie, bring a hit. They've already killed off Ben Hur. Over towards Palace, they go. Miracle, he's got the Eclipse. Can he keep vision of Palace? Palace into the trees, pops the Enrage. Radiance he's out before any further beams connect. As he'll manage to live. They turn over towards RR, but he's into the trees. Still, though, that's a, a second time Ben Hurd after this early momentum. Two deaths back to back. As T1 can take this top tower. Oh, we'll get a more down in the lane. T1, they do have this incredible pushing power with the helm done, with an enigma on their side with the necro book. When they win fights, they will take towers very quickly. Yeah, they have a they have a very scary five man. Once they start rolling, like ki kills can turn into kill after kill after kill with this lineup because they have so much catch with this Kunkka and that Venge. And yeah, all these orders are just going to make everybody that much stronger. That. That run. So even though they, I feel like they already have the team fight advantage, now they even have aura, these big auras on top that are going to just make them quite a bit stronger. So let's see how Excretion punches back. They've got their Mars ult ready. He wants to get involved, and they'll find the Enigma. 
easy kill for them. There's Polizum was trying to find somewhere safe to farm, hoping they would be hanging around, but they were they were all there waiting for him. He'll say space is created. There's Miracle. He's able to continue to farm up the map. He's got his Mask of Madness done to help speed up that farm even more. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Palace is going for the Battle Fury. Yep. And I believe you mentioned the Arcane Ring, right, on that Enigma? Yeah, he's, I say he'd be happy with that find. Super nice, because now he can just rush straight into the mech rather than picking up the energy booster. So now there you're actually going to have, I mean, an early mech for their team fight too on top of all their auras. Which I don't believe that execration is automatizing. I saw Murano going for Yules instead of that match this game. Well, I guess having the Yules is is going to be nice. An extra bit of Dyer's interrupt for, for the neighbor in the team fights before he has a BKB, which of course will be quite some time away. Yep, top. Ooh. BHM, pretty far out here. It's going to drop down the arena. See if that allows them to get up. Good slow for the stroke of fate, and they're hitting a lot of great spells from outside the arena. That, as that provides them hardly any safety at all with the way they can throw in action. Miracle cleans up another kill for this Luna. Still, though, the top spot's being held by both Ben Hur and, of course, Palos there, right at the top. Almost has and the B Fury finish. It's, Very close. it's a quick B Fury. It's, it's, a, it's a great timing. At least if he doesn't die ten times back. Yeah, he doesn't die. Right <laughs> yeah. But he's, it, he, yeah, he's, he's a step away from having a very good time. on a mid lane. Mid lane. Again. <laughs> ben Hart has been caught once more. They get the swap onto the tree. As they'll look towards R, they will find him. Or maybe not, actually. He's running. The bear gives the vision, though. They get the kill. Ben Hart does actually manage to make it out of there. Come back towards it, and I, do, I, do, I swear I've seen this happen a few times. Um, teams playing Revenge and Grim. Grim gets a great soul bind, then Revenge goes for the swap, breaks the soul bind, and then one of the <laughs> heroes gets to escape. I've seen so many teams do it. It's happened before. I, it, it, it's, I feel like they've got to be careful. They're just letting them get free. They're breaking them out of the chains. Is that better? Does live there? I think he would have been dead otherwise. Probably, yeah. It did, it did, he was gonna go down, and that gives, I mean, more time for Palos, and now Battle Fury online, so... 15 minutes, gonna yeah. Farm pace. You're gonna be happy with that timing. It's not yeah, bad at all. very solid. Level 12, too. Pretty impressive. I think he's the highest level in the game. Yep. And with this sort of timing, you know, you, you absolutely can give the Lunar's Farm a run for money. You know, Palos can... Can keep up. I mean, he's, he's got to certainly put more work in than a Lunar, as Lunar is a, a little easier to farm at speed with, especially with this Mask of Madness and Yash are pretty much complete on Miracle. And obviously, you don't quite provide the same amount of team fight as a Lunar does. Oh, yeah, absolutely. A bit more time. You, you got to, you know, you need to have that item on top of the Battle Fury, whereas the Lunar, of course, is just good to go. Yeah, he's actually queuing up the BKB, so he wants to have that immunity because there's a, there is right. a crazy amount of magic damage. I don't really see that too much. He switched to BKB, okay, as I'm saying it. He's gonna be switching a bit, but we Maybe we tend to just see that S and Y. That that is really cool. Basha, that's a, that's a little different with the Battle Fury. Yeah. But Battle Fury into Basha, that's it. He sort of went to both extremes there. The Battle Fury BKB, okay, he wants to play really safe, make sure he can go into the fights without dying. And then S and Y is like the middle ground, and he's like, nah, I want to bash it. And we'll see if he gets it, but if he does, I, I, I don't think I've seen any of the other versus really go Battle Fury into Basher. That, that one, that's full aggro. It's, a, it's just weird to me, because you build one that wants you to farm, and then you build one that wants you to fight, so I feel like you're kind of counteracting yourself a little bit. Yes and Y for fight both, so. Yeah. Mid. Mid. Oh, mid. I got a guy on the Yaha tries to jump forward to provide some sort of help, but he's so low. Oh. Black Hole comes out, dragging it off. We'll get them to a stop. So, will the lives of Execration as four of them go down. <laughs> T1, take another tower. They could take do another one. They could take Roche, yeah. Yep. But these auras with this power. And Execration, so they, they are 2k ahead, but it just doesn't feel like it's there at all. I can have just uh, feel it's, it's just the draft. T1's draft is... It's just a top tier draft. It really is. This lineup. What, what do you do against these heroes? They just pretty much done as a unit at this early point of the game. Absolutely. And I, I was raising the concern about Execution with their damage. And I feel like it's really going to start showing right now. When these heroes all now start getting their aura, they have mech finished up on that Enigma so he can counteract the little damage that they really do provide. I feel like it's just going to get scarier. And there's Rama as well, who's also building into a yeah. pipe. So I feel like damage for Execration is just really not going to be there in this mid game. Not for sure. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Four of Zion pills. Both these guys have been great. I think you know he, 
You know, Ferev obviously a solid offlane player, but who's going to win these games for T1? It's going to be Merica, right? He is that carry player that that's always going to be on those four protect one sort of heroes. Mm -hmm. As long as you can keep Miracle alive, he he because you know he's always going to have to farm. It's very, you know, if Miracle's not farming, Dyer's then something's going to be wrong. With the team. Okay, nice double leap into yours to disjoint the X. Did I say leap into the double yours? Double no, leap into double, yours? No, you said I don't double know. leap. You said it right. You said okay, it right. I just, I just, I'm, I'm on something, and I don't know, man. <laughs> it's been a, it's been a long morning. Oh, so T1 able to clear out their jungle, and I, they're probably still kind of keen on fighting. Black Hole's still on cooldown, but they have the big important one, at least, that comes in with the Kunkka. That boat is going to be the big one, and I believe, yeah, they have, the, they have those auras, so yep, why not? Go fight. Marana starting the fight off at 300 because he arrowed the book. Whoa. Tara going to catch. Ben is watching. I mean, how do they get into execration? Do they want to take this? Who's going to initiate? It looks like they're going to get initiated upon the Xbox. Sabi HM will turn, get the spear onto Miracle. Has managed to grab the wall, but Eager Dream in with the spot. Saves Miracle, gets him out to the side. Palos still trying to fight on the soul Baron, linking him and Ben Hurt together. Miracle's getting so low, but they can't even kill him. But once he's still got that Aegis, of course, as they take down both Palos and Ben Hurt, the rest of Execration having to run away under the cover of Moonlight Shadow. BHM hiding, trying to juke out any potential of being clipped by a tie bringer and they will manage to escape both him and Yaha. But the fight, again, overwhelmingly in T1's favor. They take that tower out, and it's, it just it seems impossible for Execration Dying to take a fight. Attack. Even it's though their attack. gold is I'm even, the hero matchup, it just isn't there. It's, it's all in T1's favor. Yeah, yeah, and we see 5,600 damage done, but you saw that rum come out, and then the mech and everyone looks pretty healthy on the side of t1 after that they were getting they were getting like to half hp but that's what i was talking about it's like they don't have that extra little bit of damage at the moment to really finish off those heroes and now they're gonna fight into that was without black hole and without eclipse so yeah. it doesn't it's not like these fights are gonna get any easier by any means in these next few moments it just seemingly will get more and more difficult as ben Hur has to really watch himself inside of the fights too Oh, they got some nice stuff here as well. Miracle has found himself a Grove, but a free extra bit of attack range on the Luna always feels great. And they've just finished off the full pipe on Frev, so as you were talking through the other ways, they're keeping one another alive. Now there's another yep. barrier in play. Yeah, and somehow tree... Execrate has got to get through. And, yeah, and, tr and Tree just tree will not provide any damage. Like, very limited damage that this hero is going to be providing inside of these fights. And he's getting stalked at the moment down here. He's, uh... They clear out the trees. And they're ready to catch him. Dragging him back. And he was uh, pushing huh? his luck quite a bit there. Oh, I think they're able to get the Grim Stroke. So some of that strength when they are apart. Radiance there it is, it's done. Down. He's got the bash of Palos. So we'll see what sort of a difference this makes, but already a bit of a glimpse of the, the struggles of the Earth that last fight. Having this revenge, you know, you, you, you've just got to jump on in your dream. You go on anyone else, you try and go on Miracle. The save's going to be there every single time you try and come in. But it's not a squishy venge. It's not like some five position venge. It's yeah. a mid venge. Like he's got yeah. 1500 HP. And the 27, uh, what, 27 armor. The 21 yes. minutes in. Good old Luna blessing. 26 on the Luna. Yeah, look at this. They're already in the high ground. Yeah, I guess I mean, of all the games we've followed, they never really talked about it. But because your base. Well, we'll see it. They do manage to get the jump point in your dream. They do manage to kill okay. it. The black hole is catch up. Palos and in fact, Yara clips on the side. X mark onto him, but the Yules will put a stop to it. Here comes the Eclipse now, pushing them back. But Execration, they do keep them all alive. Finally, though, the Lucid Beam comes in. Catch your Palos on the retreat. 22 minutes in. It's a Luna Venge liner. They're taking the racks. The bottom racks are gone. Oh, Over the corner they go. Malapis into the boat. As this one of 22 minutes in is getting pretty ugly. As look at that. They're hitting your board, look at Merkel. Yeah. Patch is coming in. They said a minute, a week and a half. I think there's a lot of people waiting to say goodbye to Luna. <laughs> this hero is so strong right now in the right pair of hands.
Yeah, especially when you combo in this type of way. When you yeah. build a nice draft around it to protect her, you've got this Venge mid, you've got the Kanka Rom, you've got this mech, you've got so many different Dyer's things to just utilize and get that push going early on. This, like we said, this, this is a draft that can just steamroll you. You make one or two mistakes, you now just lost your axe and you're in a pretty much a possible recovery position. They're desperate, kind of smoking out of the base here to try to find something since all the ults were used. Maybe they can catch at least a couple kills here. Oh, BHM gets spotted. They will find the shot. Yeah, they do manage to catch him in the remnant. He turns, gets the soul bind out, but the rest of the team don't want to fight. They'll let uh, Yokam die there. It's something, but it doesn't change the dynamic of the game at all at the moment. Yeah. As they're gonna, they back up and they're going to try to keep fighting, but it's, it feels like the same story of each fight is just going to happen. Where T1 is grouped up and they just have way too overwhelming of a team yeah, for expiration. Near BKB. It's going to be so impossibly hard to kill. 6 0 and 5. Yeah. Just a clean game, by, clean series by Miracle. Looking for that catch. Yeah, huh? Can they find it? Ooh, it's just out of range of the Malefice. Hollison not able to close the gap. Ben Hur, he's got, he better stay hidden in those trees. Step so I feel like they can just You're probably get the BKB. It's going to be coming out of Miracle very soon. So he'll probably sell like, what, the, the Wraith Band, pick up the BKB, and they can just actually go for high ground. I feel like they can just go to push forward and probably just take a fight around there. I don't believe, I don't know what the execration can really do to fight. They haven't really acquired anything that's gonna be this big game changer right now. And you can see that, I mean, they're, they're losing their tier two, but they know that fighting is incredibly hard to do. Uh, they are gonna try for the smoke and head up here. But they're not gonna get it before the tier two goes down. And the question is they really want to try and take a fight into this. Who's Who going to be the one to initiate? There's a swap, and then there's the rum and everything that can come out. There's just so many different ways, but here they got a good map around. They're on Polosin. They, they do have scout the Enigma. Spearing him back. Polosin, he will fall. So they start the fight, kill him off on the back. Now they'll turn on the one for him. The Fuel's trying to stack it up, and he clips the BKB, and the Fiends come crashing down upon them as Miracle just cleans up. Three dead. No buyback on either Ben Hur or, of course, on the old Ursa. As Palace is out, Yahar's trying to draw them away, but they've got the vision. Back they drag him, he could have timed the Yules this time. Does still have the leaps as he tries to run away, but the missile connects. Swap back from In Your Dreams straight into the hard hits of Ferev's Gunker. As he'll buy back. There's still such a large amount of time, but there's no Void Spirit, there's no Ursa. And up there goes the high ground. 25 minutes in, T1 ready to try and claim a second set of racks. That was those moments where, you know, the Mars ulti goes down and you just think about, you're not trapped in here, you know, not trapped in here with me, you're trapped in here. We're not trapped in here with you, we are trapped in here with us, as they just dismantle fight. That was a great wrap around on the Enigma and a five second arrow on the Luna. But they just can't focus down any targets. They go down so quickly to this push, even with the overgrowth, trying to help them out a little bit. They do have the fortification, Palo step forward. Tosh to throw him up, there could be Arena back in there. Early comes up, Miracle, Miracle is getting low. Pops the Mancer, he's trying to run. Pops the BK to be turned, he's using the light. He's in with the mech, with the black hole. Shanji them both. They can't kill Miracle, the team playing perfectly to keep him alive. They resume business onto the racks. As frustrations there for sure from Execration. They just cannot break through this lineup of Team 1 this game. All right. Overgrown. What can they do with this? Ben Hur really wants Miracle dead and he will manage to get it. That's 800 gold straight up for Ben Hur. A big kill to get. Can he get away with it though? He's trying to run, but all spells on cooldown. Ben Hur will still fall. As this is no worry for T1, they can wait until Miracle's back in and repeat service straight down the mid. Only one set of racks left to take. 27 minutes in, this game is just feels pretty impossible for Execration to play with their heroes right now. I actually thought that Ben Hur was going to kill him in a GG. I thought it was one of those moments where he's just like, ha I gotcha, you know? Because you can just see the way that the fights are going, it's... Yeah, it, it just gets harder and harder and harder, and it, it's, it's pretty. 
It's pretty hard. It's pretty, pretty hard on yourself, right? You get pretty, pretty down. And, I mean, T1 have played super well around their timing. They knew exactly what timing they wanted to push and how they wanted to itemize. I love the way Pelosin has done that in this game. And back to Rush. Agent's Cheese couldn't kill him. Could barely kill him the once. Can't we go through that, all that extra sustain. That's a tough one. Yeah, it's a tough one. I think as the panel said, execration they've just been having tough times recently. On an 11 game lost streak. Oh no, really? Oh, I actually did. Yeah. yeah, it feels bad for execration, and then, uh, unfortunately for them, I don't think that's going to stop here in this match. This looks to be another one to add to the tally. Let's throw BKB for Ursa, Moonlight Shadow. Do they have everything ready? Yep, Overgrowth is ready too. They've got everything. But, Rush is dead. Arrow connects. But nothing they can make of it as 4F he finds Palos. Centro on the high ground gives them that setup. He's able to live a little longer. They're still poking, trying to force out the BKB or the Enrage. Poking the bear. It's fine. See Van Hurt as well, standing on the back, but already they've found another connection onto BHM. Right. Hit the torrent boat though, holding onto the boat for now. Forever. Yeah, Saving it for one of the bigger targets. For if, okay, he was getting his plate mail out. I'm like, for if you have 280 mana, you know, both cost 225, he needs a little more mana to work with. He only has the one spell if he wants to. Ah, just keep the game. Now he will have the mana. Regeneration! Regeneration! And he finds the regen. Okay. So he has enough to be able to sustain, and they can look to push as those two others, those two side lanes are just going to push naturally onto Excretion side. Yeah, Miracle's got the butterfly complete. Oh and they get a telescope yeah, so, too? Yeah, it's all coming together for T1. Telescope, I mean, not that it robot, hasn't been already. Butterfly. It's sort What's of been together since range? the draft. This lady's attack range, let's see. 330 plus 365. Very nice. You can't run from this Luna. Execration, they'll prepare themselves for the final. God, he 368 damage. 42 armor. Oh, God, how do you take out this Luna now? My path leads to riches. So, quite the struggle. They're struggling with getting terribly. Ooh, they're doing an X swap play, it looks like. Oh, Palos. He's able to turn though. Silence in play, another beam down. They drop out the remnants, not gonna catch Miracle. Miracle just standing his ground here. Taking this tier three. They have a repair kit. I don't think it's gonna be powerful enough to stop this. As Miracle rips through it. They do jump. They may be able to burst him at once. They will. That's the H is gone. Still having the BKB ready to commit with it. They do jump forward, drop the arena, looks to commit onto in your dream, trying to lock down the vengeful spirit. The boat comes in, doesn't hit them as they're able to step to the side. Powers puts the BKB in the enrage, looks towards Yokama. Yokama forces himself off to the side. The BKB will come to a finish as well as the ultimate. As Miracle bursts him out with a loose beam. Jump forward from Ben Hurd, trying to bring down Miracle, but a swap from in your dream brings the void spirit back into the clutches of the rest of the team. The buybacks are out, Miracle focusing the ramps, looking to get those Megas online for T1. The repair kit will slow him down. But Palos, he without buyback, death for 55, Benno stepping forward, but you see the beams just destroy him. Miracle does fall. They do manage to hold and keep this game alive for a little longer. But maybe not most though, as Ben uh, still goes down to the end of the day, even without Miracle this time round, T1 can do it, but just the four of them. Over they go, Polisic finishing in style with a one-man black hole, making sure that your heart cannot jump back to the base. As GG, it will be called, this one will be T1, as they take game two with that, both games this series. Two to zero for T1 against Execration. And they look, they look pretty good, this T1 squad.